and welcome to Model Kit Stuff and part 8 of our U9 build. There is not much left to do in the way of kit parts at least. Um, so I'm going to try and get these on in this video. So what we have are some deck fittings um, left. So we've got the guns to do, we've got some bits and bobs to do around the uh, bow planes and, and what have you um, and we've got some other bits and pieces to do at the back the jack staff flag bits and pieces like that so um, yeah some bits and bobs really so uh, let's have a look at what that looks like so um, I'm sort of working stern to bow I think so we'll have a little uh, thing to put on at the right at the back which is made up of two little parts if I can find them I don't find things quite so well with my glasses on right so part 9 and 10 there two little things that make a thing um, so I'm going to shove those on next. I'm not quite sure what they are. Um, they're not the jack stuff. They go right at the rear. Um, so let's nip them off and see how they go together. Um, I finally know what these red things are. And a, a big thank you to the viewer that told me that they were the covers for the life rafts. And that, that's why they're red. So, yeah, that all makes sense when you know it makes sense. So it has nothing to do with ringing bells or anything else that I might have seen. Um, yeah, what I do know is they're a nice, um, nice breakup of all this grey. So they look okay. Right, no seams to clean up on these parts. So I'll have a look at... Uh, in those and get back to you in a sec. There was no seam on these parts but as I was just working out how I'm going to put them together um, I noticed there's a seam on the inside leg so I'm just taking that back. So the two parts meet at the top and then attach onto the deck. Um, so I'm just going to flatten ever so slightly the base of the legs so that they sit nice and flat um, they look quite tricky to put together so um, what I'm going to do is glue them at the top with some of the contactor professional because that's a slower setting glue which will give me time to then place it on the kit uh, on the ship I should say and um, see where we're up to. I call that a ship, it's a boat. I've said it before and I will say it again, it is sometimes difficult to think, work and talk at the same time. Right, let's just see if that looks right on that. No, it doesn't. Oh dear, oh dear. Right, let me put my cap on my glue before that dries. Right, so I've got three legs touching where they should do. There's little recesses on there and one leg doing the can cam. That's better. Okay, so I'm going to just put a little bit of glue on the bottom of these legs, just enough to hold it in place. There we go, and then I literally drop that into place there. Brill, that's on, glad that's out of the way. 
that was harder work than it should have been, but that's um, that's pretty much par for the course on this build. Okay, that's on, just needs a lick of paint. Okay, cool, what's next? Uh, the jack stuff. Actually, no, we'll put the little side plates on. So, there are little plates here with the various different ship numbers on. But U9 is separately up there. I've already pre-painted on the sprue, so um, they go into a recess, so I'm hoping that we won't see the face where we've cut it away from the sprue. I mean, if we do, it's not a problem. Just a little bit of touch upon the paint. Just a tiny amount there, that's all it needs. Course that doesn't want to go on. So I'll put a bit more glue on. If it doesn't work with a precision hammer, get a big sledgehammer. Yeah, that actually sticks out a little bit, so we'll need a touch-up. Okay, so um, next part is the jack staff. And a little tip here with this. Um, it, it's two parts. So we've got this main part here with the actual pole on it um, and the mounting point at the bottom. And then we've got this separate part that glues on here to create this sort of uh, wedged shape base. Um, the the flagpole is actually moulded half on there, so it straddles half of that piece and half of this piece. Now I've just cut this off the sprue and was gently cleaning it up with my abrasive, and I realised that what I was doing was this was moving and it was about to break off here. So I'd recommend that before you clean the pole up, you uh, glue that on so that that is. Um, cemented into place and a bit stronger so basically we're gonna put that on there before we clean up because it's it's a very weak joint okay there. so that's the jack staff on and well that part's actually much more fragile than it should be um, it would have made more sense for that pole to have gone into that part as a separate part um, anyway it's uh, it's on. So next we've got four of these, two for the bow, two for the stern. Um, so I've painted them on the sprue. The tops will need um, a lick of paint um, and they'll need a little clean up. Um, so we're just going to take those off the sprue uh, and we'll clean those up on the sprue. Um, just makes it easier to handle them. Okay, now in theory, I should be able to just nip these off and it will fit straight in. So let's, let's do these bow ones. So that should just pop straight in there. Yeah, that's a lovely fit. So there's a little raised rectangular bit on the top, so that goes in the direction of the sort of stern to bow direction. So let's bob that one on. Obviously that would have had quite a lot of um, wear with docking and tying the ropes up and stuff and as um, and as it's quite low down in the grand scheme of things, I mean the, the water level on this thing is, is where the um, light line is, so you know, pretty low down, 
Um, that's going to get quite rusty that bit, so uh, I'll have a little bit of fun with that later. Okay, so I'm going to put these bow ones in now. Um, they're all the same parts, so it doesn't matter where you put them. Some easy. So I'm thinking we might put some, uh, do a little bit of rope work on this. I've noticed on a lot of pictures um, that there is a rope that goes from the, the bow along the side up to one of these um, points here and then disappears inside the boat. So, um, and it sort of hooks along. So, I might do that, um, and if I'm going to do that, I probably need to do it before I put the structure on around here. Um, we'll have a think, but um, I think it'll add a nice little bit of animation to it. So when we come to fit the bow doors for the torpedoes, uh, we've got options of um, open or closed. So we've done uh, one open torpedo tube um, and one closed, so I'm probably well. In fact, I'm, I'm going to do closed on one side and open on the other side. It gives you a, a, a view of, of, of both. Then, so let's have a look at these. Now, these parts have already been pre-painted um, on the sprue, so it's just a case of snip them off and, and glue them in. So. Make sure I get the right one. So this one's going to be open. So that's 13. A little bit of touch up to do on that once we've finished cleaning the nub off. Okay, and then there's a little fork that sort of goes into the kit part. Oh, that slots in there nicely. It does mean that you can't see the torpedo tube at all, actually. You can just about see the um, hatch because we uh, painted that a light colour on the inside. So the torpedo tube that we put in, um, you can't really see. So what I've done is I've just put the ends of the teeth into the hole little bit of liquid poly on and then just pushed it in. We've made sure that the door's as wide open as it'll go. Does that look straight? Yeah, that looks good. So a little bit of touch up on there. Uh, now on this other side, and we'll probably be able to show you this a little better than the last one. We're going to do that closed. So with this one being closed, um, actually a little bit more problematic to fit. and then we'll push that home.
and I know that's painted but the glue because it's hot will dissolve it a little bit and I'm just going to put a little dab on the front here where the paint's been taken off where we sanded and that'll just tack it down at the front there as well I mean no one's going to move that again now so that's the uh, front torpedo tube closed and front torpedo tube open and as you can see I can't really see what's going on in there particularly well and get them just about see the torpedo door open so that's why they didn't put the tubes in because you're not going to see them but uh, you certainly will see it the one at the back okay okay so next job is the two hatches um, now I've said all along that I'm going to model these closed because there's no interior but I just want to have a look at the fit if we had it open because there is interior detail on, on these hatches. Because part of me quite likes the idea of them being open even though you can't see anything on the inside. Hmm. quite featureless when they're closed. I just bob this one on. It does add a little bit of animation if they're open. So, um, what we'll do is we'll definitely glue that one closed and I'm going to leave that one in the close position, the forward one, and think about it. I have to paint the conning tower hatch interior white so I think we'll make the decision at that point um, because um, then when we've got the white paint out we can just do that or we can decide to shut it at that point okay so that one's down that one will leave dry fitted for now so um, my next task I think is the mast bases and there's two little flats on the deck um, for these mast bases and I just want to scrape away a little bit of the paint just to help with the gluing because there's no location log so there's no strength in the part there's only the mating surface so that's just going to help make sure I get a good bond. What I don't want when I'm starting to rig it is for the mast base to come away under the stress of me rigging it. And the other one is up here. Okay, so let's get these bases on. I've already pre-painted them. Um, but because they sit proud of the deck, there will be a little touch-up where we've removed them from the sprue. First one. The second one. Let's just dry fit. So that first one goes there. Yeah, so it's quite a bit proud. Sand the nub off that. Just make sure that's nice and flat. Okay. So I think there has been some concern about how strong um, the joint is here with the masts when rigging. Though I haven't seen anyone rig it yet, so. Um, not sure. Uh, my intention for the mast rigging is easy line. I'm still a little undecided around the rigging around the bow planes and stuff. We've got turnbuckles supplied in the kit, but um, I don't know how easy it's going to be to do them with uh, 
easy line and whether we're going to need wire or stretch sprue or something for that job. I'm doing this slightly differently, putting the glue on the part. I think on reflection that's a better idea. So we can show the masks folded down if you want, if you want to avoid doing the rigging, but um, where's the fun in that? Okay, that's those masked bases on. Let's have a look. So there you go, we can see them both there. So I need to paint the masts before we, um, we fit, fit them, but I want to just dry fit them first. Okay, so uh, I'm now at the point where I'm needing to start to think about rigging. So as I'm putting the parts, um, the final parts onto this um, boat, we've got to the masts. Um, now, I have not seen anybody rig this yet. Um, so what I've done with the masts, on the very top of the mast, there's two little pips. Um, they're quite small to see and I have just drilled two little holes in those so that it's easier to thread. So when the mast is um, in situ, um, the two pips are facing forwards and, and aft, not side to side. So um, my thought process is I'm going to use EZ line or, or similar um, and we can thread it through the hole, uh, glue it in place. Um, and that'll be easier. So I'm not too concerned about rigging the masts. Um, when it comes to rigging um, the two stacks there, um, we've got no mounting positions on the deck for that. So I'm going to use some etch eyes. Now you can get these from, uh, we well can certainly get them from Cromwell, uh, uh, Cromwell model boats. Um, that these are, if you Google Caldercraft etch eyes, you'll come up with these things. Um, and basically, what they are um, is they're for wooden model ships. These actually came in a kit. You can see I've used some, and these are my leftovers. Um, but you can buy this as a, a fret of etch parts on its own. And just to prove my earlier point about the flag staff, I've just knocked this ever so gently and it's come off. It's quite a poor design that. Um, so I've just broken that. Um, now the other thing we've got to consider is the rigging around um, the bow planes and the, the stern planes here. Um, so we have a number of turnbuckles, um, which the instructions tell you to drill out with a 0.5 millimeter hole. I, I've drilled them out with a slightly smaller hole for now. Um, and then you get these um, little rods which stick out from the side. Um, and again, they've got little pips on like the masts. Now, I've also gone and drilled those out. I don't think you can see the holes because they're small. I've gone. I've gone with a smaller drill bit than a 0.5 um, and we'll start there and move up if we need to. Um, now I'm more concerned about the turnbuckles um, and interestingly I've not seen anybody put these on yet. So I've just managed to drill holes in all of these tabs at the back so you've got some along the edge here and then a hole needs to be drilled in the top of that item there and then um, there's a couple of connection points here which also need drilling out. Um, like I say, I'm using a drill bit that's quite a bit finer than a 0.5 um, and I'm going to use this, the thinnest gauge wire that I've got. Um, I'll measure these for you and let you know what they are before the end of the video. Um, I think the, the bow is going to be more problematic. Um, but very simply, as close to the hull as we can to make sure that we're not likely to just break the part. We just 
drilling through that. Yeah, that's going okay. So I'm going to drill these holes out and then we'll have a look at getting this rigged. Right, I've just drilled through the connection points on the on the front hull um, and it's gone okay. The only one that is a problem is this lower one um, because I can't get my power tool in. Um, and rather than going straight down like I've done with the others, um, you have to drill that one at a slight angle. So I'll just show you. Now these, um, I'm not sure if I can show you this on camera. These little connection points that stick out, they have a small flat on them. So you can use that as your uh, guide for your drill bit. This appears to be the easiest way of doing it for me. Um, we we'll drill a little hole through and then we can run some wire through. Um, and once we've done one side, we've got the measurements to do the other. Now the other thing I want to do while I've got the drill bit out is drill the holes for the etch eyes that I'm going to use. So fortunately um, we've got a rigging plan from the people that have done the etch set for this. So we can use that for some guide to the locations. Then we'll have to just make a template up for that. And we'll do that next job. Okay, so that's done. Um, don't know how strong these are going to be, so when we put the wire in and start manipulating them, if they snap, then what we'll have to do is put some brass tube in, um, and that should. Um, and then we can glue the wire inside the tube. Um, that's my sort of fallback plan. But I'm hoping we don't need to do that. Should be strong enough, no reason why it wouldn't be. Okay, so just a little bit of care needed. Um, it is a little bit tricky. Just take that out so it's not in the way. It's a little bit tricky, but it is doable. So I'll just show you. They're not all the same length, so that one's quite short, so that becomes a little bit more difficult. There we go. So that's all the rigging holes done around the bow planes. And we've done all the rigging holes for the stern. Okay. Um, so next is the rigging points for this. Now it has um, cables that go forward and cables that go back. Um, so we'll have a look and take a view on where we need to put those. Uh, and I'm using the same drill bit that I've used um, for everything on this rigging, which is a, a 0.3 drill. Uh, which is just about right for the etch eye bolts that we're using. So, we've got a mast going there, and that needs um, four stays coming off it. So, if we look at this here, fits into there like so and then it has four stays coming off um, so those lines um, need to attach to the eye bolts so we just need to drill those out so 
just kind of make sure she's nice and flat um, and keep everything aligned. Go. So that's those two done, um, and then okay. Then the next two, pretty much um, aligned with these holes here at the back of these holes. Um, but rather than being on this deck, they're on this upper deck. If it, that's the right term for it. Right, so if the four mast is there, we've got the rear mast there, um, and then we've got some rigging to do for the um, stacks there. So there's three rigging points that come off this stack, one on each side and one forward. And the forward one is not central. It comes off this um, thicker, shorter stack. Um, and that goes to a little point just here. So we'll put that one in next. Um, and that's roughly in line. Like so. Um, and then the two that go off the side are on this lower deck area. Um, and we have... They go right up against the edge here. So I'm going to do this side first and then we'll do the correspondence um, on the other side. So the line actually wants to come forward slightly. So we're going to do it just in front there. So it's just forward of that line. Let's see that, let's just see that better. That's right. So that's the two side stays, the forward stay. So that's the stacks done. So then we've got the rear mast here. Um, and again, we've got four coming off there. So we want a forward one, which is just behind this one we've put in. So we're gonna put that in just about there. that one in. Then there's two that come up on the deck here. So and they're sort of in the middle. I've not put my flexi line in so I can't quite get in. Let me turn this around. Let's get in a bit better now. So on this line here, just a little more than halfway. off of that and then we have another one which is just in this panel here and then about in line with that there's another one here on the deck That should be um, all our holes done. 
so next we need to just drop in these eye bolts so we need 11 eye bolts in total I've already cut one off so we need another 10 okie dokie so I'm just going to drop them in place for now and then what we'll do is um, when we get the glue out to do the rigging we'll go around and glue them all in um, there you go they just drop in place um, and look really good so I will show you in a sec now that these came with a 172 scale wooden model kit and like I said before you can buy them separately um, from shops that sell uh, wooden model kit supplies and fittings you'll be able to get get these and don't know if you can see them they look nicely in scale so I'm going to put the rest of these in and then we're going to carry on with the rigging. Apologies, this might be a little difficult to see because the EZ line is so very, very fine. But we're going to take a length of EZ line and cut it. Um, I use um, these um, sewing shears, They're brilliant for cutting um, rigging lines use them all the time on the wooden ships and then we're going to put one line through the hole I've pre-drilled and just so it doesn't slip off I'm going to put a weight on that straight away We'll thread the other end through. And we'll put a weight on that end. So we've now got a single Um, line with the turnbuckle in the middle um, and you can see how once we pull that tight that'll sit quite naturally like that so now we've got to thread it um, onto the ship so I'm going to take my first weight off And for this to work, we have to thread the EZ line from the top. I'm just going to dump that on there. So we're threading the EZ line down through the hole that I drilled earlier. So I've got it through, I just need to grab the end. Right, we've done that. And we'll put the weight on that. I'm just going to put my finger on the EZ line because obviously gravity is going to take over. It's going to want to pull it down. So, take that weight off. And we're going to grab, thread that through its location point like so and then put a weight on that there we go so I must just show you what that looks like if I just turn this round So you can see we've got 
the turnbuckles there we can move the turnbuckle to wherever we want it we've got the two weights there keeping the line taut so all we have to do now is position that to where we want it um, in the middle or to one side or however we, we decide we're going to arrange it they tend to be a bit closer to this end um, and then when we're happy we've got it in the right place we glue those two points we glue underneath here um, and then we can snip trim these off and snip the center let's do that So this turnbuckle needs to be right up close to this support, about there. So I've got some CA glue here. I'm going to put a little dab on there and a little dab on that side. So that's the EZ line locked in place on the turnbuckle. And we're going to put a little tab of glue on the connection point on the rod and on the hull. Now, neither the turnbuckle nor this rod, connected rod, has been painted yet. Um, the whole thing, including the EZ line, will get painted. So that should now be all held in place so it's easy to get the line because we're not going to lose this line we can reuse it um, so we keep it clamped in these mini pegs and I'm going to just snip that off and we'll do the same with that one There we go. So that's easier than cutting two lengths together, gluing it together or tying it together and then trying to tie it through the two lengths and, and lining it up. Um, so next job is to deal with underneath the turnbuckle, which I've now done. That allows me to just hold the EZ line up a bit and get my cutter in. So we've done that, um, and the EZ line has now been cut in the middle. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but I'll give it a waggle. So just there, you can see the line dangling. So you've got two options now. You can either get your tweezers, get your loose end and glue it back in, into place so it looks like it's threaded on properly, which is what I'm going to attempt to do. Or you could just trim it at that point and no one would know. It's getting painted anyway. And once that's painted, I think that'll look all right. Okay, so we've completed the rigging now and given it um, a coat of paint and it really elevates the model once that's on. Um, the effect is quite quite nice. You can see the uh, machine gun stand there um, has been painted in at the top in, in black where the ammunition box is um, and the eye bolts that we've put in for the rigging have been painted in um, so we're ready for rigging so um, what we're going to do next is um, clear coat this so I'm going to use um, uh, a semi gloss um, give it like a satin finish which is my preference for ships um, um, with the exception of the um, little red bells they're going to be um, call them bells because they look like bells they're not their um their uh, lifeboat um there's life inflatable lifeboats in them i believe 
Um, oh, there's two eye bolts I've not painted. Um, they're going to be matte. Um, and then my, the lower hull, um, the dark section of the hull is also going to be matte as well. So that's just going to give us a bit of a, uh, a variation in the look of, of this. And then we are pretty much ready for weathering and we are done. So there's a little bit of final rigging to, to be done. Um, we'll do that after we've clear coated. Um, so rigging between, putting the masts in and doing the um, last bits of rigging. Um, and, but we will do that before we uh, weather it, I think, just to make sure that we, um, we weather it, taking into account um, the rigging as well. Okay, feels like we're nearly there. Um, I'm now looking at this part here, which I think is some form of boom, and we've got four of these to be attached to the kit. Um, now, I'm now past the point of trusting the instructions when it comes to painting this kit. Um, what the instructions say is to paint them the pale grey colour. But when I look at pictures of um, any of the um, U9 to U12 boats, these are darker than the pale colour and they even look darker than the deck. Now if the booms they're going to get battered around a little bit so the paint would chip off. So I'm going to guess that just like on warships these are wood and probably varnished wood at that um, to preserve them. So I'm going to paint these wood. Now, uh, I don't know for sure that that's correct. Obviously the photographs are black and white. Um, I can't find any reference to say for sure. I don't even know for sure that the booms, I'm just guessing that they are, but um, I'm gonna paint them wood because I think it will, it will look nice on the boat anyway. Um, Okay, I think we're going to wrap this up as a video. Um, we have um, one video left to go, I think, um, which will include uh, finishing off the conning tower, uh, the adding the booms, um, completing the upper deck rigging between the masts and so on. Um, and then the weathering. I'm not sure at this stage whether the weathering is going to go over onto a second um, video or not. We've got the base to do as well, so quite possibly. The base is a bit flimsy, so it needs a bit of strengthening. Um, um, and we need to modify the base so that the hull can sit on there without getting scratched. So, um, as always with a, with a model, as you get towards the end, you get some bitty bits that you've got to do that take up longer than you expect. So um, anyhow, that's it for now. Uh, U9 is looking seriously like a U-boat now. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, stay safe, everybody, and I hope to see you all soon.